Hi again, coach. Great to see you back for the last section of chapter six. This video is very important for you. Child abuse in sport is a very serious issue. Many sport coaches have in the past gone to prison when found guilty of abusing children. Many others have lost their career, families and livelihood even when they were cleared of any wrongdoing. This video is all about helping you, the coach, stay safe when coaching children. Staying safe as a coach means three things. As a coach, you have to ensure that one, your practice is based on sound and age-appropriate scientific principles. Two, you have covered all the safety-related bases before you even stand in front of the kids. And three, you know how to minimize the risk of receiving an allegation against you and what to do if it does happen. We will cover these three areas in succession. Let's have a look at the first point, ensuring that your practice is based on sound and age-appropriate scientific principles. This is all about understanding the basic principles of your sport and coaching and how these principles apply to the age group that you're working with. For example, you should be familiar with some key facts about physical and psychological child development. Another example would be having sufficient knowledge of the special physiological characteristics of children compared to adults, so we don't ask them to do things they're not ready for yet. The basics of this knowledge should have been provided to you in your coaching qualifications. The iCoach Kids MOOCs 2 and 3 will review all of this again for you. You can also find lots of relevant information around these topics in the iCoach Kids website. The second point you need to be mindful of is covering all the safety related bases before you even stand in front of the kids. For example, gaining the appropriate qualifications as a coach. This is not only about your sport specific qualification, but getting first aid training and attending a safeguarding and protecting children in sport course where available is highly recommended. You should also get a police background check if possible. Other important elements include performing a thorough risk assessment of your sport and venue and keeping good records of your participants. Emergency contact numbers and relevant medical information are an absolute must. You should also be always within reach of a phone or have a fully charged mobile phone with you. Having a first aid kit with you or knowing where the nearest first aid point is and who the first aider on duty is are also important. The third and final point relates to the need to minimize the risk of receiving an allegation against you and what to do if it does happen. As a coach, you should take the following into account. First, be familiar with your sports guidelines on physical contact and coaching. In some sports, a certain level of physical contact with the participant is unavoidable and even desirable to ensure their safety. However, all sports now offer guidance on safe physical contact. Get them and study them carefully. Sharing these guidelines with participants and especially with parents so they know what to expect is very good practice. Second, be kind, professional and polite in all your interactions with participants, parents, other coaches and officials. Avoid shouting, heated arguments and the use of inappropriate language like profanity or sexualized expressions. And coach, everybody knows you're a human too. If you ever do or say something that is wrong, please apologize unreservedly as soon as you realize. If you find yourself apologizing a lot, it might be time to get some help from a professional like a sports psychologist. Please take action before it is too late. And three, don't put yourself in a vulnerable position. Even if you mean well, a big, big no-no is to never be left alone with a child. If you need to meet with a participant or have a chat with them, always do it where others can see you. Never in a separate room and never with the door closed. If the child demands privacy, then go get another adult that can act as a chaperone and sit in with you. The same applies to giving children lifts in the car. You should never give a child a ride on your own. In the extreme case that you are forced to do so because there is no possible alternative, children should always go in the back seat. You should also let someone else at the club know that this is happening and they should record it and follow up with the child's parents or guardians. Suffice it to say that the same policy applies when you're on the road with a team 
all before and after practice or competitions. You should never enter a child's room and never sleep in the same room with them. And you should never be in the changing rooms when they are showering. Please check your national guidance on the use of changing rooms as this may vary depending on the age of the child. Finally, please follow your club and federation policies and guidelines regarding the use of photography, video and social media. This should make clear what you are and aren't allowed to do. And while we're on the topic, if you work with children, all your social media content like Facebook, Twitter or Instagram should be appropriate. You can be sure that parents will check you out before they let you take care of their kids. Okay, so what happens if despite all these precautions, an allegation is made against you? Well, the answer is relatively simple. You should report it straight away to the club designated safeguarding officer. They will ask you to write a statement and will follow it through with the parents or guardians of the child and decide what to do next. Do not keep it a secret and hope that it will go away because it won't. Being proactive, open and honest is the best strategy. If appropriate, while the club welfare officer is investigating the incident, gather any evidence that could support your defence. Like anyone else, you have the right to defend your innocence until proven guilty. OK, so that was chapter 6, safeguarding and protecting children and young people in sport. The next video will offer a quick summary of everything we talked about in this very important chapter. Before watching the summary, please complete all relevant core words in the study guide. Thanks again for watching. 